Royal Surprise, the show that rewards the nation's most deserving people. Now, my first guest is already on the way to the studio, but he doesn't even know it yet. Take a little look at this. Now, let me introduce you to this lovely man. There he is. Now, his name is Robert, and he's cycling around London, but he doesn't know that this very studio is his final destination, and I've set up the whole course. So, for example, I know that he's about to go past a man holding a load of balloons. Here we go. Three, two, one. There you go. <laughs> Now, before he gets here, uh, please welcome his wife, Laura, and their daughter, Emily, to explain more. Here they are. Hi. Hello, Emily. How are you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. 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 Now, welcome to the show. So, tell everybody why we've hatched this plan together. Well, my dad loves cycling, and he's raised loads of money for charity. I'm really, really proud of him, and I just want him to to have a surprise. Have something a bit special. Yes, for, for him. him. OK, and does he have any idea what's about to happen to him? No, not at all. Not at all. So no. this is quite exciting, isn't Oh, yeah. It? Yes. OK, well, let's do it. Let's see where he is now. He has no idea where he's being led to now. He might be looking a little bit confused. Look at his face. He's going, where are you sent me into a warehouse? <laughs> Get ready, he's going to be in soon. Because you were not expecting to be here, but Robert, this isn't the first time you've been on camera this week, is it? No. No. You might have guessed by now that those cameras were actually my cameras following you around. <laughs> I'm going to shed a bit of light on this situation. Um, Robert, while you get your breath, here is why he rode into our studio tonight. Growing up, my dad always lived life to the full. Being a pub landlord, Rob was always very close to the people in the communities. We both used to do a lot of fundraising work. Dad's the kind of guy that will never let anything stand in his way, any challenge, he will overcome it. His real love was weightlifting and bodybuilding. He was definitely a superhero dad with the old uh, muscles. Looking back on the days when we were first married, we were just a, a normal, happy family. And then one day, everything changed. About 10 years ago, Rob had an accident. He injured his back. It slipped a disc. It uh, severed his spine. The doctors turned around to us and said that, unfortunately, Dad's going to be paralysed for the rest of his life. My whole world felt totally turned upside down. He was totally depressed, angry. It was like living with a completely different person. We tried everything to, you know, to perk him up and do what we could. But as far as he was concerned, his life was over. He'd given up, which made us feel like we were giving up. That was a difficult time to reflect on. For, for seeing my dad, excuse me, seeing my dad that way, you know, it is difficult to talk about. Not really. What changed my dad was the Paralympics. Watching other people do hand cycling made him realise that he didn't just have to sit there and rot away. He could still use his arms. It was like this little bright light had gone off in his head and he was all shiny and happy and he actually had something he wanted to do. It was one of the best days of my life to see my dad, my dad smart again. Once he'd got his hand cycle, he was just away. It was like a kid with a new toy, and the spark was back, and I knew then, I knew that Dad was on his way back. That was where the determination came from. I can do that. I'm going to do that, and I'm going to raise some money while I do it. Dad's trying to raise enough money just to open up a club for disabled children so that disabled kids can get out of their chair and experience the same feeling that Dad gets when he rides with his bike. Over his lifetime, he must have raised about a quarter of a million pounds for different charities. For anybody, that would be an incredible achievement, but knowing what Rob's been through, that makes it even more special. Oh, it's an absolute privilege to have him as my dad. I love him to pieces. He's, um, he's the best dad you can have, definitely. 
I think I married a very special man. He's a very special person. And I consider myself very lucky. You have a family that love you very much, who are incredibly proud of you. What was it like to watch that and hear those things they said about you? I didn't know that they thought that. I thought uh, I'd lost them when I'd had the accident. Laura, what was it like for you seeing your husband go through something like this? Well, it was a terrible time. It was terrible for the whole family. I mean, at the end of the day, I just wanted my Robert back. Mm. I can imagine. And Emily, you were very young at the time. It does affect the entire family, doesn't it, something like this? Yeah, it changed the whole dynamics, everything. We had to move house. You know, it was completely different, but still, I still wouldn't ever, ever change it. Um, if you don't mind, can we go back to those first few days of getting used to what had happened? For someone like me who was outgoing, and I used to love helping people, it had gone. I'd lost it. I'd lost me. The doctors and consultants were kept on saying, you know, you need to come to terms with your condition. Um, the wheelchair is going to be your legs. And I rejected it. Um, and then seeing Karen Dark, who's a Paralympian silver, yeah, yeah. cross that line, someone just went off and I thought, do you know, I need to get a bike. <coughs> I need a hand cycle. Because if I get that, I know what I can do. So I started to plan, and then I realised that the bike was so expensive. How much are the bikes, then? Are they...? Um, they're about 5,000. So that's um, a real commitment for anybody, isn't it? If they're they going to buy one of these, I mean, that's, you know, it's not your regular yeah. push bike. The wheelchair is the wheelchair, but the bike, it gives you... It allows you to walk, it allows you to run, and it allows you to race. Yeah. So you become normal. Yeah. You, and you're free, and you're independent. You don't have to have anybody push you. I have met some amazing people. Really? I thought I was going to die. I wanted to die. Yeah. Now I have a life. I'm reborn again. Well, I think by being here and doing all what you've done, you are an inspiration to everybody, wouldn't you? <laughs> you agree? Wow. Um, we saw earlier on that staying fit, way back when, was incredibly important to you, wasn't it? Yeah, I was a chef, so... I knew about food and nutrition. And I got into bodybuilding by bodybuilders asking me to do diets. Yeah. And I didn't know nothing about bodybuilding. I thought, well, I was 11 and a half stars. I thought, hmm, change my diet, put oh. a bit of weight. <laughs> Here we go. So back then, there must have been a certain Hollywood star that inspired you. Oh, in the, one or two, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> Robert, this world famous bodybuilder that we're talking about right now has heard all about you, and here he is with a message what? just for you, the equally unstoppable Mr Schwarzenegger. <coughs> Have a look. Surprise, surprise, Robert. It's me talking to you, the machine, the Terminator. I'm so proud of you, Robert. You are the true Terminator. Because the kind of obstacles that you went through and setbacks that you went through, but you never gave up, you continued, and you're like a machine. And I'm so proud of you because of that. So keep on going. Never give up. Be and stay a machine. And I'll be back. <laughs> wow. A message from the Terminator himself. That's quite something. Speechless. I'm just a normal guy. Uh... I don't think you are. You are anything but normal, let me tell you. It's extraordinary what you've done. So Arnie's impressed with what you've achieved so far, but your next challenge is to help younger people in the same yes. situation to get into this sport, isn't it? Tell me yes. a bit about what you'd like to do. Well, I came across... I've helped a lot of young children and I've been to help them learning centres and disabled. And I took them to show them the bike and I put children in it. And when they're in it, you can see such a change. Yeah. My dream is to, to get five hand cycles mm. to sort of start training them. I've now got the club set up. I've now got permission to train them six days yeah. a week to show them how to ride. Mm. But the biggest thing of all is the freedom, the independence and the freedom that they will feel. That you felt. That I felt. Mm. As in, I've been lucky. I've had a fantastic life. 
I've been an able person. I've ran, I've played football, I've swam, I've held my hand, wife's hand as we walk down the beach. Yeah. A lot of these children will never do that. But what I can give them is the second best. Yes, yes. And that's what I want to do. Robert, you've got so much left to achieve, but I know there is one Paralympian hand cyclist who has been your inspiration. Take a look at this. When your world is turned upside down, you have a choice. You can let life's challenges beat you, or you can take control. It takes a special person to say, I won't be defeated. Your strength, determination, and will to succeed define you. And for that, Robert, I applaud you. Please welcome silver medalist, Paralympian, Karen Dark. I know you were backstage listening to that and Robert's been wanting to, to meet you for a long time and you've been a real inspiration. But when you heard his story, it really struck a chord with you, didn't it? Absolutely. I mean, I think our journeys in many ways have had quite a lot of things in yeah. common. We both had a passion for sport and fitness, not had, have. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and it's a, a tough thing yeah. to go through. And, and to hear your story and all the things you've gone on to do and the, just the passion and the time and the commitment you've put into supporting other people, it's just incredible. It's yes. brilliant. Emily, this must be a, an amazing moment to see your dad meet one of his heroes. I just was hoping she'd be here and I'm really pleased that he's met her because I know that he's very, very inspired by her. And, and at home, does he talk about this um, club that he wants to set up a lot, this hand cycling club? All the children? time, yeah. How many bikes do you need to start a club? Five. Right. Karen, I think we can go one step further than that, don't you? Surprise, surprise. Thanks to Quickie, they are donating seven handbikes so that you can start <laughs> your club. <laughs> and there they are, look at that. All yours to take home and realise another ambition in your life of opening that club. There's nothing to stop you now. What will those mean to you, those seven bikes? I <laughs> you Everything. You're an incredible man. He really isn't he? Amazing man. Oh. <laughs> Good luck to you in the future. Thank you so much for being here. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Karen Giles, Emily and Laura, and of course, Robert. <laughs> By joining me after the break for a love story that started over 60 years ago. Welcome back to Surprise Surprise, and I'm now joined by Tom and his granddaughter Sally. <laughs> Welcome to Surprise Surprise. <laughs> How lovely to have you both here. Now, Tom, I hope you don't mind me saying, but you had 